Okay guys, we're back still with the calculus. Now let's talk about calculus in real world. Where do we find calculus in real world? Can anybody answer us with that bright, obvious question? Let's see if we can answer that. Back to the uphill box problem. We said there's somebody who's pushing his box uphill. We said if the hill is linear, life is good. You can use the old mathematics if we can say to find the curvature that he's on and trying to know what's the length or what's the force need to be applied based on the weight of the box and all those details. But what if the hill is curved like this case, then how are we gonna solve it? Obviously in this case, we need a calculus. Just for a more highlight on that topic. So in the curvature, what you do to solve that problem, you take the curvature into small little segments those segments each one of them will be assumed to be linear so you can use your old mathematics to solve that little segment and you have, if you apply like you split the whole slope into infinity amount of little segments then solving those little segments will let you come up with the final solution if you want to be precise like a close solution to reality as much as possible uh, assuming that's a problem or like, let's say it's a problem of the rate of change. An object is moving in space and time, and you're trying to calculate a certain physical property for that object. So in this case, you can see, we took this little segment. If you look at the slope for that segment, it's linear. The old mathematics would solve that problem um, with no issues in this case. So that's what it is. We're trying to use the calculus to split the complicated real life problems into the simpler mathematic that we learned in high school and try to come up with a solution by the way i have no i have no clue why this guy is pushing this box uphill and making us troubles but um, we're gonna handle it and i'm sure we can um, overcome this problem and uh, give him what he wants if we take another example let's assume you graduated from from your bachelor degree and you end up being an electrical engineer in a certain uh, communication company and this company is building towers that are connected together through ropes and electrical wires in this case the company is telling you hey we have tower a and tower b we want to connect them with cable and that problem replicates all over the country so th just a little mistake with the length of cable will cost the company thousands if not millions of dollars so they want to tell the supplier company how much cable do they need to complete this new project if the problem is based on old mathematics as simple as the left side box so you have uh, a length of six on the y-axis length of eight on the x-axis you want to know what's the length of the cable then you th you use the um, Pythagoras theorem and you can easily find that but in this case you have a certain curvature that you want to handle so you know the distance between the two towers is 200 yards but the cable is not 200 yards there's the weight of the cable there's the curvature and there's the gravity and the mass and all those details maybe you need to consider um, how the heat would affect the cable being extended and retracted and um, if there's any wind and so and so so in this case if you fail to learn calculus then you fail to solve your problem in real life so that's a real life example so please save humanity and uh, you don't want the CEO of that electrical company to be pulling his pants uh, for that issue. Next example, you have a simple house that you want to tell how much material you want to put on it to, to cover the, the roof. In this case, for that little home, you have um, two rectangles on both sides and a triangle. You can use simple math. To tell how much area you have then how much material you have based on the dimensions of each piece of material you're using but if you have on the right hand side a dome then that's again a curvature that's a real life problem more than the home um, and designers are coming up every day with new designs and new uh, kind of creative approaches to to be different than others and uh, designs that allocate less material but it's more visual appealing so in this case you, you need to go to calculus to solve your problem. Otherwise, 
um, if you end up being an architect, then um, bad fingers will be pointed on you. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to keep saying that in a negative way, but I mean, understanding the real life, everything around you is a curvature. If you think about it, everything around you is nonlinear. So you need to find the best approach to solve nonlinear problems. More importantly, it could be the, the, the future of humanity is in your hands. And if you, you know, if you're excelling in calculus, then you could save humanity at some point. So a humanity future problem in here. So if you have somebody who's playing American football and he's passing the ball from A to B, then you can decide in order for B to catch the ball at uh, position C. You can easily predict that uh, with the old mathematics or the, the simple mathematics. But if you are thinking about the sun and the Mercury is rolling around the sun in an uh, elliptical path, Venus and Earth, then you want to send a rocket from Earth to Mars then you want to account for the curvature and how much um, fuel do you need and what kind of direction does the force need to apply and when in space and time curvature in order to reach to Mars at point C in this case. If you fail to do that, then you fail the humanity. So that could be a big deal. So that's it, guys. I I mean, it's there's unlimited quest, unlimited examples of real life problems that are depending heavily on math and specific on calculus. And uh, of course, these examples will keep showing up. We, we will do our best to, to keep um, once in a time or once in a while or as frequent as possible to show those real life problems, how they relate with what you're learning.